Normally, the biggest issue when dealing with cesium is to keep oxygen away from it. In this video, I will be doing the exact opposite. I will use pure oxygen and let it react with cesium over a long period of time to produce cesium superoxide, also called cesium hyperoxide. There were two reasons why I decided to make this compound. The first is you can't even find a picture of it on the internet and nobody has ever made it outside of a lab before. And it can be used to produce pure cesium ozonide. Let's talk about the plan. First I have to make some cesium by reducing cesium chloride with lithium. It's the same process I've used in my other videos. And in the second step I have to let the cesium react with oxygen to form cesium superoxide. The challenge here is to only produce the superoxide. We don't want any monoxide, peroxide or any of the other oxides that cesium can form. So let's talk about the plan. Um, I'm going to use this reaction vessel to collect the cesium that we're going to make today. And after that I'm going to fill it with argon and seal it with this um, KF flange that I made and then I'm going to pull a vacuum on it and slowly add oxygen to oxidize the cesium inside. Since I have made cesium a dozen times by now, the first step is basically routine. I added cesium chloride and lithium to my still, closed it up, flushed it with argon, pulled a vacuum on it and started the distillation. Even though I have done this reaction many many times, it is still a pleasure to watch the cesium drip into the receiving flask. So now that we've got our cesium, I'm going to turn off the vacuum pump and flood the system with argon. I'm then going to disconnect our reaction vessel here and use this um, flange to seal it on the top and then we can pull a vacuum on it and slowly let oxygen into our reaction vessel. With a gentle stream of argon flowing through the inlet of the reaction vessel, I disconnected it from the still and closed it with a KF flange. The cesium in our reaction vessel looks good. We have a little bit of oxidation up here, but that's not really a problem since we are going to um, introduce oxygen to the system anyways. Um, so now I'm going to pull a vacuum on the reaction vessel and then I'm going to slowly introduce some oxygen and hope the reaction is not too violent. The seal on top seems to work great as we are getting a good vacuum. I'm going to let this um, pump down a little bit and then we will introduce some oxygen that I am producing with my oxygen concentrator. It is pretty tricky to find a good angle for the camera, so I hope this will work. I'm going to now switch off the vacuum pump or disconnect it from the system and then I'm slowly going to introduce some oxygen and you will definitely see a change on the surface of the cesium and in the original paper they melted all of the cesium. Mine is, I don't think it's completely melted or molten, um, but I think the reaction heat produced will melt the rest of the cesium. So I'm first going to start like this and we will see if I have to raise the temperature a little bit, um, I will do that. But for now I'm going to leave it like this and let only the surface of the cesium react with the oxygen. I think this camera angle works a little bit better. So, moment of truth. I have introduced a little bit of oxygen. Not much seems to happen. Temperature is still the same. I think I'm going to heat this up a little bit. Mm. 
let's introduce some more oxygen. Okay. Again, not much of a change. Now we've got a black surface. Let's just stir it a little bit or agitate the surface and introduce some more oxygen. I'm sorry that I'm not able to get a better camera angle, but the surface, whenever I'm introducing oxygen, turns black, kind of a dull black, and after a few seconds it turns back to a shiny surface. And the temperature of the reaction vessel is definitely rising um, sharply, so I will wait a little bit for it to cool down, and then I'm going to keep adding oxygen. I really hope I will be able to get it out of here or in the original paper they ground it with a pistil and I'm really hoping that it won't solidify down here. Um, I don't know, they said they used a quartz glass tube. This isn't quartz glass, it's borosilicate glass. But yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure how um, what kind of solid it will form and I'm really hoping it uh, I will be able to get it out of there. After about an hour the cesium turned into a black solid and did not take up any more oxygen, which means it was time to heat the reaction vessel under oxygen atmosphere. Because the oxygen intake of the cesium stopped we are now using our oven to heat up the cesium to first 100 degrees C, um, second 150 degrees C and third 200 degrees C and add our oxygen continuously. Since the reaction isn't proceeding any further, I'm now going to reattach our argon and then I will open up the reaction vessel, stir the contents and close it up again. Then I'm going to reconnect the oxygen and we will heat it again to this time 290 degrees C for, let me just check um, for how long. It was somewhere in this paper, ah, there it is. One atmosphere of oxygen, 290 degrees C, two weeks, oh, two weeks. While there is the possibility that this is one of those situations where the person responsible for the experiment went on vacation for one and a half weeks and just left the cesium in the oven, I don't know that for sure, so I will have to let it react for the mentioned time. Whenever the reaction vessel was opened, argon was flowing through it. The argon is used to prevent moisture from getting into the system. Exactly what I was worried about happened. The cesium solidified in the bottom of the tube and I will now try my best to loosen it all up and grind it down. I'm seriously thinking about using a drill bit because it's kind of squishy, it's not really a solid. So I'm going to try and use this drill bit to at least um, yeah, loosen it up inside the tube. Mm. Yeah, here you can see it better. So we've loosened up the product and now we're going to close it up again 
I think I'm going to pull a vacuum on it before reattaching the oxygen line. So the pressure looks good. And I am now going to wait a little bit. Um, so the reaction vessel is pumped down and then I'm going to reintroduce the oxygen. We are now a few hours into the reaction and you can already see some yellow cesium superoxide and I'm now just going to open it up again, um, grind it down, mix it up, remove some of the stuff from the walls and then it's yeah two weeks <laughs> till it's done. We are now at day two of the reaction and as you can see almost all of the product turned yellow orange. I also switched to an oxygen bottle so I'm able to build up pressure in the reaction vessel. The powder inside you can see it right here. This is um, stuff that adheres to the glass wall so strongly that I'm not able to get it off and I don't want to break the glass. The powder inside is almost completely yellow. I now have dry argon flowing through the um, reaction vessel, so you can see, look inside. As you can see, the powder um, clumps together and kind of solidifies. So I have to break it up with a drill bit every five hours um, to expose new surface to the oxygen atmosphere. This is what the product looks like after four days. Since I cannot heat the reaction mixture when I'm not at home, the actual reaction time is approximately 12 hours. Whenever I'm not heating the vessel, the product stays under an oxygen atmosphere. You can see that almost all of the cesium turned yellow. At this point, it is probably a mixture of cesium oxide and cesium superoxide. And then, after six days, it happened. I screwed down the clamp too tightly and the reaction vessel cracked. I spilled all of the cesium superoxide and cesium oxide inside my oven and yeah, I was pretty pissed. After sitting on the couch for one hour straight and hating myself, I made a new reaction vessel and I'm now going to transfer the product I've saved from the oven into the new reaction vessel and keep going. There is no way I will be able to calculate the weight gain at this point because I've lost so much product and I don't know how much. Um, but I will keep going, I will keep um, doing it like they did in the paper. Um, it's day six at this point, so I will at least um, keep it in the oven for two weeks. And yeah, well, let's go. I have now transferred all of the product into my new reaction vessel and as you can see it's a lot less than before. So I've lost more than half of my um, product that I started with. It's annoying but there's nothing I can do about it. I will keep going with this amount. This will still be enough um, to see how the process works and it will be enough for my next project but yeah. I still... I'm still annoyed. After four more days I decided to end the reaction since the product didn't change anymore and the mass did not increase over the last two days. To transfer the cesium into a vial I made this glass piece and yes I know it looks like crap, please don't tell me, I know, but I ran out of borosilicate glass tube so I have to go with this. It will work, so there's no problem. I will just connect this KF flange to my reaction vessel, transfer the product into the vial, 
And after transferring it, I will flush the ampule with argon three times. And then under argon atmosphere, I'm going to seal the vial right here. I loosened up the product at the bottom of the reaction vessel to be able to transfer it into the vial easier. Then the vial was connected and the apparatus was flushed with argon three times before transferring the cesium superoxide into the ampule. After everything had been transferred, the vial was sealed under an argon atmosphere. Here you can see the product. It is a pretty yellow-orange substance. Because of the superoxide anion, the cesium superoxide should be paramagnetic. The paramagnetism is a result of the oxygen's unpaired electron. And I think it would be neat to show this paramagnetic property with an experiment. To demonstrate the paramagnetic properties of cesium superoxide, I came up with the following experiment. Since paramagnetism means that the substance will be attracted, weakly attracted, to a magnetic field, we should be able to measure that with a precise scale. This scale is relatively precise. I hope it's precise enough for this um, experiment. And the setup I came up with is to use this foam block to space out the magnets from the scale itself so the magnets won't interfere with the metal and the scale and if we turn on the scale you will be able to see that the magnets do not change the reading i touched the foam block there that's why it changed so as you can see there is no effect if i hold the magnet near the foam block now, if we get our cesium superoxide sample and place it on top of the foam block and then put our magnet near it, we should see a negative reading on the scale since the substance will be attracted to the magnet and less weight will be applied on the scale. So let's take our sample of cesium superoxide and place it on top of our foam block. Then I'm going to tear the scale, so it shows zero. And now we're going to take the magnets again and hold them near the vial. And as you can see, we are getting a negative reading because the cesium superoxide inside the vial is attracted to the magnet. And if I remove the magnet, the scale jumps back to zero. Now the setup is a little bit different. The vial is exposed on one side. And now if we place our magnet underneath the sample, we should get a positive reading because the sample is attracted to the magnet, which is below the sample. So it exerts a force on the scale. And as you can see, we are getting a positive reading. And as soon as I remove the magnet, the scale jumps back to zero. Another experiment that shows the paramagnetic properties of cesium superoxide can be seen here. I built a little boat for the vial. And when I hold a magnet near the vial, I can move the boat on the surface of the water. The footage you can see right now is sped up to six times its original speed. The cesium superoxide will be used for another project I have planned. And I really want to thank my patrons for supporting me. And I hope you liked the video. Thank you a lot for watching.